This is Don't Panic, episode number 274, recorded May 11th, 2020. The return of the nub. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this episode of Don't Panic, the technology podcast on gadgets, the internet, and you. I am Sean Jennings, joined by two guys who desperately wish they could get a haircut. It's Colby Rabadou and Dan Miller. Hello, <laughs> gentlemen. I'm mostly talking about myself, I if should. I'm really being honest. Your hair both looks fine. <laughs> well... I have good news because one of the things I got when I went home to my apartment was my extremely ex- uh, highly prized hair clippers, which I've only ever used to like trim my sideburns. But um, I think tomorrow they're going to mm. get the uh, the ultimate test. I'm I'm, th- I'm I'm sorry. Did I just hear live stream? <laughs> live stream dance haircut? Is that what I just heard? <laughs> Hey, uh, we'll make it, a, as the Twitch streamers say, we'll make it a sub goal. Yes. So if, if, if we can get 100 subs on the Don't Panic channel, <laughs> I will live stream the haircut. I would let Dan just like start to Patreon, starts collecting money. <laughs> when I hit $1,000 a month, I'll cut my hair on the internet. Now, did you, you did not do that for your mustache challenge. I feel like I, I missed that while I was convalescing. No, there wasn't anything. When I shave it, maybe I'll live stream. But it kind of, <laughs> there hasn't really, it, it's taken about six weeks. So there wasn't really anything to, there's nothing live about it. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's like uh, washing paint dry. Yeah, except slower. You should have done a time lapse. like Oh, like a photo you take, oh. take a picture of yourself every day. It's not too late to start again. There's so much quarantine left. I, I think it's still got... I, it's still trying to grow out, so if I start it now, you still might see some evolution. So, no, this is... I Word on the street is I'll be back in the office within a month. So as soon as I'm back in the office, this thing's getting taken right off. And I can't <laughs> wait. I hate it. I hate it. But I, I said I was going to keep it until mm. quarantine was over. It, it, wasn't there, like, a Red Sox team that did that, where they, were, they weren't going to shave well, the playoff, until... Uh... The playoff beard is, a, is kind of a baseball tradition. Oh, I didn't... That's Every baseball team does that. Uh, uh, most of them it is common. i did not know that yes yeah it's still in the last like five or ten years i mean it's not like an ancient tradition but um yeah they they, they grow ancient. their beards until they get eliminated from the playoffs playoffs it's true not a game not a game we talking about practice now i'm just doing old sports uh Press conferences. Uh, so what's been going on with you guys? What's we haven't we haven't chatted in a while. We haven't caught up. What's what's going on in your worlds? I bought a new computer for my birthday. Happy birthday! Happy Cinco de Colby. Thank you. Uh, thank you. It was good. I did have margaritas on Cinco Cinco de Colby. Wow. The eve the eve of Cinco. I I still get confused about which day is Cinco de Colby. Um, <laughs> that's what's so great about Cinco de Colby. It's but, right. but it's obvious. Used it, mostly the whole time, but, but you're having fun. But just yeah. translate it. It's on the fifth of Colby. Like it's not hard. <laughs> right. Obviously, <laughs> the I had some margaritas. I had a very reasonable number of margaritas, so I did not repeat. I think last year, maybe it was the year before, where I had too many margaritas going into my birthday. Started off real strong, like. The rest of it was bad. But, yeah, it was nice. My mom sent me a indoor herb garden thing. Like, shines a light all night. Colby, were you... I'm trying to remember. You've been at every party I've been at in the last ten years because I don't go to parties ever. Was there a party where there was a margarita fountain? Why does that sound familiar to me? I don't know. I don't recall that. Maybe you weren't invited. Uh, it could be. No, there was it's definitely awesome. a, no. There was definitely some kind of event I was at where there was a. Uh, it was you know like a like a chocolate fountain or something, but it was a margarita fountain, and you would just go up and like scoop a margarita out of it. Was that it? Like the McMillans? That sounds like the kind now, of thing that, that was. Or was this at some roofing company shindig that you went to? The, the roofing industry. Yeah, you know. I hear they get pretty wild. Uh, yeah, didn't they, you go to Vegas? Oh, didn't didn't maybe, you go Sean, to Vegas and crash your car? Wasn't that, Sean, wasn't that a whole story? Sean, I heard? <laughs> Sean maybe maybe it was it was one of those like anti cyclone drain things, but filled with margaritas. 
Oh, maybe I was just drinking out of a toilet and I was so drunk I didn't realize the difference. <laughs> I, you know, I don't, honestly, my, my memory escapes me. I, ha- I haven't been to that many parties, so it shouldn't be hard to remember, but apparently it is. So, but in your mind's eye, and I've never seen or heard of a margarita fountain, how does that actually work? Like, Well, you, can, you... you can buy, like, a multi-tier fountain, like a champagne fountain, or, like, you can buy something you put liquid in and it just bubbles it from the top down to the bottom and it makes a fountain and you can put champagne in it or you can put margarita okay. in it. You could put fruit juice in it if you wanted. And then what do you dip a cup in to get yourself some? You, I think you, you use like a ladle. We're going to get some. Sean's getting some from the cat uh, right now. Yeah, we, there was some uh, hail and lightning earlier and he wasn't very happy, so he's been snuggly. Well. Um, the, uh, no, you use like a ladle and you scoop it out. It's kind of like a punch bowl, but it's just a little more oh, fun okay. it's a fountain. Got it. Now I, now I can visualize. Thank you. So I think maybe for Cinco de Colby next year, we get the, the margarita fountain going. Yeah, that'll be very uh, virus safe. <laughs> Colby, put your mouth under it. <laughs> Colby's never done that before. Colby's never done something stupid with some with some container of alcohol. Definitely That's not. What happened? <laughs> I've never ice luged. <laughs> Uh, uh, time to be alive. I went home and I got more stuff from my apartment to bring back to the place that I was supposed to move to in April, but instead I've only kind of moved to. Uh, so I got an actual office chair, which I, I, I told both of you about. Uh, wire cutter recommendation, which I've actually sat in before. I think if I had not been able to sit in any of, of the office chairs, I wouldn't have gotten one because they're so expensive. But I knew I liked this office chair, so it, uh, it was doable. What else did we get? Uh, we but got two pieces of furniture. Uh, that was a challenge, carrying furniture down three flights of stairs with two people, one of whom still can't use most of two of his fingers for anything <laughs> that required... Like, one of the only problems I still have with these two fingers is because they're numb, I can't feel when I'm holding something. Like, uh, it, there's a lot you depend on the tips of your fingers for to know, mm. like, <laughs> is this bowl, like, still, like, is the leverage correct? So, you know, I we lost the two bowls before I was banned from <laughs> carrying bowls around one-handed. I just, so, I just but like somehow, to imagine uh, Dan picking, like, picks up a bowl up the counter and then just slips and drops, shatters, oops, and he picks up a second bowl and immediately drops it, <laughs> oops, and then goes to pick up a what, third bowl and she slaps your hand. That was definitely hand. a precursor. Is I remember talking to uh, Lena, the person I live with, and I remember she was like, Dan, what, what's going on? And as I was talking to her, I just the what I had a plate of something and just drooped and I spilled it all over the floor. I had no idea. Because like, oh. um, like your brain, it depends like, oh, there's there's like this amount of pressure of being like fighting against gravity right now. Um, so anyways, somehow we managed to carry two pieces of furniture down three flights of stairs and not drop it. Uh and slow good. cooker i i still have a new inbox slow cooker i've had for like five years i've never used so if you have any slow cooker recipes you mean like a like a crock pot like a crock pot yeah um yes i love my crock pot uh, hit me up with some recipes i use it i have a great uh are you a fan of chicken noodle soup actually we've bit, made homemade chicken noodle soup and it was amazing yeah i have a great uh, slow cooker version um, okay. I also have a great uh, like a Mexican chicken and rice and beans you can easily make in there. Um, yeah. Yeah. Please send them to me. Absolutely. Uh, that would be great. Oh, the coffee table. Yeah, the coffee table is the big win. The hair clippers. Uh, Lena did not have a coffee table, so you could sit on the couch, you could watch TV, but you couldn't eat or drink anything. Where are you gonna put all uh, your coffee? Exactly. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> that was the first thing I noticed. I was like, what am I supposed to do with this coffee? Just go straight to the desk? What? That's no way to live life. You Dan wake just like, up, puts it on the floor in the middle of the room. coffee and then just immediately go to work. <laughs> uh, Hard times. Yeah. Well, speaking of coffee, I, I, I you know, you guys are, are sort of fancy coffee guys. Yes. Oh, here's an interesting thing in, in my... In my post uh, quarantine world, 
because I didn't have my Chemex, I've switched entirely to AeroPress coffee making, which is, I would say, decidedly less fancy. Um, but And it tastes different, but it's still delicious. But anyways, I didn't mean to take you off. But No, 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 no. Well, it's, coffee it, update. Because it, it, I have a big coffee update in my life because – I used to. I was a big Keurig guy. Still have my right. Keurig, and I like it. But Keurig coffee, it's kind of weak, and I feel bad about the environmental impact. Especially now that I'm working from home, I'm not making one cup at a time. I have several cups in the morning, so it's not very efficient. So, as you guys know, I went and bought a kettle and was attempting pour over. But the thing is, mm-hmm. I'm lazy, and also I don't care if my coffee tastes that good. So I compromised and I bought a drip coffee maker. Wow. Yeah. Is it a Mr. Coffee? Isn't that exciting? <laughs> Kicking it old school. Kicking it old school. I picked up the wire cutters pick. Um, and I got to tell you, it's like I should have just bought one of those in the first place because it's a much better coffee than what comes out of the Keurig and you get more of it. But it's also really mm-hmm. easy to make because you just push the button and then wait a minute. And then it stays warm. It sits in the carafe. Honestly, it, it was a, a great investment. Now, question. You mentioned earlier that you drink several cups of coffee in the morning. Yes. What does your coffee uh, dosage schedule look like? Uh, well, <laughs> it's it's a good question. Uh, it's different now that I'm working from home. Um, when I'm at home, it's a pot of caffeinated in the morning, usually three cups. But, I mean, I just refill the same cup. But three cups throughout the morning, and then at lunch, I either do an energy drink or I make a cup of decaf for the afternoon. Wow. That's a lot sleep? of caffeine. Yeah. Not yeah. well. Not well, <laughs> okay. no. You don't sleep well. Okay. No, but I, I mean, also... For, for what it's worth, I only drink one cup of coffee a day, and I haven't been sleeping well either, so... <laughs> the problem is I'm sleeping too much uh, is the issue. Uh, now mm. that I'm home all the time. But no, I mean, when I'm in the office, I will do... I'll do 3K cups a day, and then two if I'm doing an energy drink with it. Uh, but I do the Coke energies, which don't have like a monster energy type of. It doesn't have that much. I think right. they say that's equivalent to two cups of coffee worth of caffeine. And no caffeine ever after like two or three p.m. God damn, that's a lot of caffeine. I, I'm not. I'm not disagreeing, but I, I swear it's one of those things where over time I've become less and less affected, affected by, by it. it. Yeah, and honestly, I don't, like I said, I will make a pot of decaf and just drink it. I just like the taste and the warmth of drinking coffee. So um, in, in the afternoon, if, I, you know, if I'm you know, i already a little too wound up, I'll just, I'll just drink decaf all afternoon. Now, did you know, I learned presumably on a different podcast once that... <laughs> you mean not our podcast? You can't well, learn anything here. No. <laughs> <laughs> I've learned things about the two of you on this podcast, but that's that's all. Um, the The process of decaffeinating coffee takes the brown out of the coffee beans, so they come out like white, and they have to dye them after. Huh. And that's why decaf coffee like stains your clothes, and regular coffee really does not. Oh, I because did not know that. Dyed. Yeah, the brown the brown is artificial. It's like brown 92 or something. Putting the brown in hot brown. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm pretty now, sure that's true. I, I feel mean, like I also heard that decaf coffee is more expensive than regular coffee for that reason. Because it's regular coffee with more work. Like you have to wait longer, do the dyeing, cost more. Yeah. Same. I've heard that as well. There you go. You did learn something. Yeah, all the other people listening can now say they've learned something listening to this show. And you can you can tell your friends that you learned something on podcasts, and it would be us. How cool would that be? That's right. Right into <laughs> don'tpicturegmail.com, uh, and we will contact your college and make sure you get that credit you've earned. Um, <laughs> the so good that, news is because of the, cur- the current situation, it's all pass-fail, so yeah. you'll get it either way. Um, there is one other thing i got to tell you guys, which is uh, I officially became an internet troll today. Oh, oh, I'm excited uh, to learn more. So you guys have known me for a long time. I'm not, I'm a pretty laid back guy. Like I don't get involved in shit online. I really don't care. But if you push me far enough, I have to do something. And so I've, I mentioned on the show before, my love of the local Facebook groups. 
Yeah. It's, it's one of the only forms of entertainment I still have in my life is the stupid shit that goes on in my local <laughs> town's Facebook groups. And we have next week, we have a, in my town and a few surrounding towns, we have a special state Senate seat election because the old senator became the mayor of a different town. And so it's like a one-off special election um, between the Republican John Kane and the Democrat John Vellis. It's a John v. John battle. Right. And John's all the way down. It's a John-off. <laughs> it, it is. Which John will reign supreme. We're going to find out next week. It's a Johnson but, battle. But, but the thing is, is that this is for a Massachusetts state Senate seat, a Senate that's overwhelmingly Democratic. It doesn't matter. This race is so unimportant, it's shocking. But there is a woman who posts every single day on the town forum about what candidate John Kane is up to. And every day, make sure you vote for John Kane. Make sure you vote for John Kane. He's going to save us. The Republicans are going to save us. Don't let the Democrats get away with it. John Kane, every friggin' day with this lady. And it's annoying as shit. And so finally, today... I said, I'm going to get the better of her. So what I wrote, so she posted a, a big, long post about, you know, John Kane is not a career politician. He's a professional. He, he's worked in the private sector. He's not a government crony and all this bullshit. And so I commented on it and I said, uh, when John Kane ran and lost the presidency in 2008, I thought his political <laughs> career would be over. I certainly won't be voting for him now. <laughs> And, I, 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 you know, I thought it, I thought that was like just stupid enough for someone to believe it was real. And wouldn't you know what this lady responded? She said, sir, respectfully, that was John McCain. John McCain <laughs> is a native of like and gives his qualifications. And then she says, John McCain is certainly not running for state Senate. And then I responded with, oh, that makes more sense. Sounds like a nice guy, but I already voted absentee weeks ago, which is true. So... <laughs> That was that was my troll of the day right there. I felt very proud of that. Now, are you planning on trolling more after this experience? I have been more. So on the town groups, I've done that. And then my other big thing is there's a lot of like COVID sort of um, half spam, half like fake news type stuff going on. Conspiracy stuff is starting to float to the top. And on mm -hmm. everyone, I'm always the first guy. And I'm always like, this has nothing to do with our town. That's my standard comment. What does this have to do with Agawam? So you I know what I heard? Forum. I heard that the uh, yeah, get ready for this. That the uh, medical industry uh, and the pharmaceutical companies in China uh, devised, engineered, uh, d d somehow I engineered COVID such that uh, it would happen now, such that uh, it would make Trump look bad, such that the Democrat would get elected. Such that uh, they would get all of these like kickbacks and uh, better uh, policies Ooh. and so forth. Man, that's, that's, that's the long game. Yeah, and, and uh, once again, like uh, I think this was a Merlin Man thing most recently, but I've heard it all before. Like, in order to believe in a conspiracy theory, you have to give people so much credit and give and, and believe that they can be so competent <laughs> as to have like because you in order to have done that, you must have started this process at least months ago, if not years ago, at which point right. you didn't know who the presidential candidate would be. Uh, well, there was and a it could, if, if it went a different way, it could have just as easily have mass manufactured the worst case scenario for the healthcare industry that you could possibly conceive of. A, uh, you know, a, a worldwide health crisis with a candidate who says, we're going to get rid of all the health insurance companies. Uh, so... I thought that was also really funny. Well, there, there was a great... Uh, are you guys familiar with OAN, One America News? No. This, this is like... The, it's, a, it's a cable channel that is like Fox News, but even crazier, and the president really likes mm. it a lot. And it's like nice. truly off-the-rails bananas. But the, the, I saw a clip someone floated on Twitter um, of a story from One America News that was the most insane thing I think I've ever seen. And it was like reporting on the coronavirus. And, and I'm paraphrasing, but it was along the lines of, of this like news sounding guy who's like, you know, uh, 
coronavirus known as COVID-19 began, uh, many believe, began in a Chinese lab partially funded by the Clintons and ran by George Soros. And it was like, <laughs> it was it was like the grab bag of every, like, Democrat villain, you know, like, uh, began in the Obama administration, partly led by Joe Biden. It's like, It was like a grab bag <laughs> of every Republican villain smashed together in a way that made oh. absolutely no sense. It was baffling. That's weird. Yeah. Um... This is totally unrelated, but I just noticed, like, I have the the Facebook stream up, and we're being, like, transcribed in real time. Huh? That's like, cool. it's it's doing, like, uh, subtitles on us. I wonder how it's going to subtitle Sean's reaction just now. Ah! <laughs> Tim Allen noise. <laughs> that would be really funny. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what happened to Tim Allen? Is he still? Yeah, he was. He I I don't know if he was on a series, Last Man Standing, which I think is still on the air, a, a half hour huh. sort of uh, sitcom. Wasn't he in a Christmas movie? Uh, yes, the Santa Claus. <laughs> and he was also arrested uh, back in the eighties for cocaine possession. And the only reason he didn't get uh, jail time was because he turned in his dealer. He was a snitch. <laughs> So, true Tim <laughs> Allen story. Wow. <laughs> Bad man. Uh, for shame. Oh, uh, that's cool. Well, this is great. Well, I'm glad things are going so well for everybody. <laughs> things are just... Things are just awesome. Yes, everything is fine. Everything is fine. Uh, as uh, Zach Friss in the chat, old friend of the show, says, Margarita Colby sounds fun. I agree. Mm hmm. I agree. It is fun. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so let's, uh, let's talk about a little bit of tech news. What do you say? Let's do it. Nothing to it but to do it. While you guys are looking at the rundown there, there's not much to talk about because nobody's really announcing anything. But. Pick out some stories while you're doing that. I want to thank everybody watching us live right now at facebook.com slash don't panic show. We appreciate you joining us. I mentioned Zach's in the chat. Uh, if you're watching now and you want to join the chat, we're watching it. We may mention you on the air, answer your questions. Of course, you can uh, join us live Monday nights about 10, 15 Eastern at that URL. Uh, guys, what's story number one? Oh, I thought Cole was going to say don't something. Don't so all I jump thought... at once. I want to talk about Walmart Express delivery. It seems relevant to my interest i want things expressly delivered well uh they'll do it but they'll also charge you for it uh walmart is launching a new delivery service called express delivery that will get customers uh, items into customers homes in less than two hours you'll be able to use it for more than 160,000 items including groceries everyday essential toys and electronics uh walmart says uh express delivery will cost ten dollars in addition to the regular charge for delivery unless you're a member of the company's delivery unlimited service which is like prime um it co uh, delivery limited costs ninety eight dollars annually. Uh, Walmart says it's been piloting express deliveries in about a hundred stores since mid April, and they plan to expand expand it to nearly a thousand stores in early May, and then make it available to nearly two thousand total stores in the following weeks. Uh, if it's available in your area, you'll be able to select the option when you check it online. Though you'll need to have at least thirty dollars worth of items in your cart to be able to select any kind of delivery. I'm guessing it's not available in New York. Um. I don't know. Let's all given go... that there there is not a Walmart in New York City. I was going <laughs> to say. That? Well, there's, so there's there's not one in Boston either. Oh wow! I, Target I, Target's I, abound, but no Walmart. I, yeah, I, Targets. I, I probably have the closest. So what's something more than thirty dollars I could buy at Walmart <clears> that <throat> I could test this with? Help me out. Uh, with. Any video game. Okay, let me search any video game. <laughs> Let's see. Red Dead Redemption 2 is what comes up first. $38. It's a bargain. There you go. Just qualifies. So let's see. More delivery and pickup options. Nope. They're just giving me regular old delivery. Same. I can get it by Thursday. Where I can pick it up in store. Well, maybe it's after hours now. Oh, that's true. That's true. And like they said, it's not at every location. I would assume it's in more populated places than... Where I live. What's interesting about this to me is I'm curious. Th there was always this story going around. Walmart was working on this, and part of the sort of questionable nature was they're like, "Oh, they're just going to make Walmart employees like just put it in their regular cars, like kind of Instacart like, and just drive it to your house." Um, 
I'm curious if they're doing that or they're doing more like Amazon where it's a dedicated delivery worker in a Walmart van uh, that actually comes to your house. Didn't you you have a crazy story where did, did, were you the one who had the crazy story you bought some extremely heavy item and then the some like random person came to your house and had to haul it out of their car? Was that you? Yes, I instacarted a bunch of spin drifts and like bottled water. <clears throat> But right. it was like eight things of spin drift and like two big things of water. And I felt like crazy guilty because I'm like, do you want me to come out and help you? And, and the lady would like very depressingly was like, no, I have to carry these into your house. <laughs> it was it was like super, super sad. So, right. That's and I never did want. it again. Shame. Hmm. That's a shame. I got delivery from Target the other last week, which was... I had never done before and was a great experience in that like it just came UPS and then it was like they like have stuff like you can't buy stuff like that on Amazon like I bought like soap right. and like you can but either yeah, they don't I got have a laundry detergent on Target for that same reason yes it was great I almost got paper towels but in the time it took me to get my order over the the de- free delivery minimum the paper towels sold out it's a shame now I've been thinking for a while that I we should all just get reusable paper towels like those you know those like big not thick but like kind of cushy white ones that you'd see in like a commercial kitchen. Not a kitchen towel, but one of those small square ones you'd get like 30 of them or something mm-hmm. is what I'm imagining. What do See, I search for to find that? They probably don't use paper towels in like a real kitchen. They right? don't. I know for I've That'd seen be insane. They, they have these great like six by six inch little, maybe a little bit bigger than that. They're not big towels because the nice thing is you just grab one, you wipe down whatever you want to wipe it with and you throw it in the hamper. It's not something you carry it's over it's your like shoulder. A dish rag? Yeah, maybe a dish rag. Maybe that's what I should be looking for. A dish cloth <laughs> or dish rag. Yeah, I want... This is getting closer, but I don't want... Like, I don't need designs. I don't need fancy patterns. I need white, durable... You know? You look at have you have you looked at any of the like kitchen stores? Yes, I was recently turned on to these kitchen stores. I, that's what I need to look into, probably. Hmm. By the way, I did just find out uh, to get the Walmart delivery, you have to go go to grocery dot walmart dot com. It's a separate section of their website. I did go there. Mm-hmm. I can get delivery. All of the slots are taken, but it is theoretically offered to me two-day delivery, and it says on here, delivery by Walmart trusted partner. Whatever that is. That could be anyone. (laughs) You know, it's very funny because um, I probably talked about this on the show before. We had Amazon Warehouse open a couple towns over from me, so now we have the, the Prime truck, the little Prime vans that go around and deliver Amazon packages. But lately... I don't know if they're just super busy or what, but now they're like third party companies where it'll be like, you know, Joe's delivery, a trusted Amazon partner. And I'm like, I don't know who this guy is, but they just come and deliver my packages. So I wonder if it's kind of the same, same idea. I bet that's a good business to get into. If you got a couple fans lying around right now. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, so there you go. I mean, I think it is. I mean, uh, Amazon. I don't even. I don't even think I can get Prime now where I live. So it would be interesting if Walmart can sort of uh, usurp them in the instant delivery market. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, no, I, I'm I, happy for you. I can't get it here. Well, I don't. I don't go to Walmart because that place sucks. So what I've been really wanting to try is um, the. Target closest to me now has um, curbside pickup where they'll actually come out and put the stuff in your trunk and then you just drive away. That's my next. I have to find. I was going to get the coffee maker that way and they didn't have any in stock. But the next, my next Target run, I'm going to do that. See how it works. Do you remember? This may have been. This may have even been one of the very first Don't Panic uh, 
episodes, but I think it was slightly before, way back in the day when Eric Schmidt was still the CEO of Google, or maybe he had just left, and they were doing, they had just announced a self-driving car thing. Someone asked him, why should why should Google be making self-driving cars? And he's like, well, you know, blah, blah, blah. He says a bunch of stuff. But then I very simply remember him saying, one interesting thing that intersects with a lot of other Google stuff is like, knowing where you drive and it, if we know where you drive and it can like determine a pattern then we can say like hey i see you're headed to the grocery store you usually get these things we press this button and we'll like just have them ready for you and just bring them out to your car and i thought that would be nice uh i don't know if they're capable of figuring it out so a- anyways that just reminded me that now walmart has beaten google to the punch we still we still cannot get a Google self-driving car, well, uh, but, but we can get groceries delivered into our trunk. But there is, I know, one of the grocery, I read an article, this was a, a couple months ago, but one of the, I don't know if it was Kroger, one of the big grocery chains in Texas was partnering with a self-driving car company. And the idea was they built these little, like, smart car-sized self-driving cars that would automatically go to the grocery store, a grocery employee would load it, and then it would self-drive itself to the delivery mm-hmm. point, and then the person would unload it. And that it was just just for that purpose. Yeah, that's cool. Which is which is certainly uh, interesting. Um, if it ever actually becomes a thing. I would love to be able to pick up groceries at the grocery store. <laughs> <laughs> nothing automated i want to leave my house I, I hey look i still and you know it's funny i thought i was at the grocery store this past weekend um i go every weekend still in person and i was i literally no joke i thought about you guys and i was like you know I, i'm i'm of the, the three of us the guy who still goes to a, an actual grocery store and uh it's a it's a bummer it's a you know li- literally i had to wait outside because it was at capacity oh, yeah. Yeah. And then I went in and everyone was wearing masks and it was immensely depressing. Well, that's a real New York City experience to go do something you don't want to do and then have to wait in line outside to do it. <laughs> I'm not used to that. I'm used to big giant stores where you cram in as many people as you want. Yeah. Now, do, you, do either of you actually, like, are you saying that because you just miss normality or did you actually enjoy going to the grocery store? I, 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 I actually meant... I like just want to not get delivery. I want to order my groceries and go pick them up. But that is a thing I cannot do. I see. Here. I love errands. It sounds dumb, but like I I look forward to running errands because it's kind of it's like semi mindless and it gets you out of the house and you, I like having a, like a list. I got to go here and there and get stuff. Um, I like running errands and it has totally bummed me. It's like I don't enjoy it anymore. Now, mm. because here's the, I, I sure it must be the same way for you, Colby, but. Carrying groceries, I didn't really realize, stupidly, until recently, is one of the worst parts of grocery shopping. Yeah. I'm like, wait, why haven't I done this Fresh Direct, Amazon, Whole Foods delivery thing before? Well, that's like for for ages, I've been telling myself I need to get one of those, like, the little old lady carts yeah. for my groceries. Because, like, I'm always, like, I end up going to the grocery store way more than I would because I I just like I'm limited by how much groceries I can carry. Like I get mm-hmm. one hand basket and I and I fill it up to the point where I it's too heavy and that's when I know I need to stop and leave because <laughs> like I have to carry it all the way home after. <laughs> but yeah. I don't know. It's been months. Maybe I'll just never go back. You think they miss you there? I hope Colby's Doubt okay. It. We haven't seen him in a while. <laughs> I feel like they have more things to work. They have better things to worry about. Who's that guy who would show up to the, the cash register listing to one side with how heavy his basket was? <laughs> <laughs> I definitely almost broke like a basket <laughs> more, than, more than one time. <laughs> Especially right before quarantine when, when I was freaking out, when I was panic buying. <laughs> that must have been hard. I can't buy one beans. basket. <laughs> Colby buys like one roll of toilet paper. <laughs> it's all I can carry. 
Yeah, because you get to the point when you live in a city where you're like, you unlock the life hacker. You say, ah, I can just bring my backpack and put all the groceries in the backpack. But then stuff like paper towels totally screws you over. It takes up so much useless space that, and it's not heavy. Yeah, but you can still only carry so much of it. <clears throat> yeah. Isn't it great that we can pay someone else to do that for us? USA. It is. USA. <laughs> USA. Oh. oh. <sighs> Wonderful. Um, another uh, another story in the rundown here. That have is... we just done one? Was that wow? We we we're just flying through time. I mean, there's no. I mean, let's <laughs> let's be real. There's not a lot of tech news to talk about. You know, all the big, all the big events, all the big announcement events were all canceled. You know, companies are pushing back release dates on stuff. It's, the, you know. I would like to talk about the Lenovo keyboard. Hell yeah, let's do it. Uh, Lenovo, a company that still exists, uh, is rolling out uh, a new uh, ThinkPad TrackPoint keyboard. It's their second version, an updated version. Um, uh, the big notable thing about this is if you've ever used a ThinkPad or Lenovo uh, laptop, you know about the nub, the nipple, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's got the TrackPoint nub uh, that you can use, to, the little red dot you can use to sort of work your way around your desktop. Uh, but it's also a great keyboard. It's a Bluetooth keyboard. Um, it's also got a uh, USB dongle. Uh, but it's USB-C for charging. Uh, it's available for $99 today. Now, here's the real question. Does it does it come in a Mac layout? Because I would totally get one. Uh, that's a good question. Doesn't look like it does. Now, you can just turn the Windows key into the Mac key, though, right? Yeah, but it's in the wrong order. Oh, like you're, the right. Windows, you're right. The Windows key is where the Alt key is. In the right. Main. Yeah. Are they the same size? Could you just swap them? Maybe. I don't actually want one of these. <laughs> you <laughs> I, I, I am. I am. So if it was forty dollars, maybe. So people out there should know. If the, I mean, it's like only five people are watching, and they're all our friends, so uh, <laughs> they do know. But uh, where we went to Marist College, a big IBM school, and there were a lot of these floating around. Um, and so I, I do have, even though I like rarely used one, although I did, um, I am weirdly nostalgic about it and I don't know why. There's just something about, about the nub. Were you guys ever big nub users? I don't think so. I never really had a, an IBM, uh, laptop, but I, <laughs> from what I did experience, I think one of the reasons that people like the the nub so much is because the trackpads on the on the Lenovo sucked so much. They were so small. They had yeah. they had buttons on the top and the bottom or something. There was some weird thing about how the buttons laid out on the trackpad. Uh, and it was hard. Yeah, I think it was easier to do more precise things with the trackpad or with the uh, with the nubbin but more frustrating to do everything else. Mm. Uh, yeah, it was definitely one of those things where I think you were either really good and comfortable with it or you were just never going to get around to learning how to use it. Because the people, I you know, I worked in the IT department where a lot of people were using these. Man, there were people who would just sing with this thing. I'm telling you, they were just <laughs> zipping around like crazy. It was, it was something to see. Now, have either of you ever seen people or been interested in using the uh, the track balls as your main input device? Uh, my old oh. boss did. I've observed this. I've never used it myself. Okay. Have you? No, not really. I was just curious. Uh, <laughs> yeah. How you would compare them if anyone had. The weird mm. one for me is, do you know, like, the vertical mice that you yes. sort of hold on to? Like, almost like a joystick in a way? Those yeah, I've, like ne a... I've never seen one of those. I have. I, yep. Someone at work has one. I think. We're too boring. I it's... honestly, that makes a lot of sense to me. There you go. That's my that's my mouse right. That's my work mouse. This wired Dell. Wow, a Dell piece of crap. 
That's old. I and by the way, this was the person who had my job before me. This is their mouse. They didn't even buy me a new one. They gave me the old one. And you brought it home with you? Well, I've just gotten used to it. <laughs> no, no, I, no. But honestly, do you want to know what the real issue is? I don't like so. Like uh, this is the this is the one I use for my my desktop, um, and it's a perfectly fine mouse. All the wireless mice now are too small or too big. I have an issue where you either get like a mobile, like portable one that's like super small, or you get like the giant gaming ones. Like this to me is like a great middle ground for my hands. Mm. Yeah. I love a big mouse personally. Now, I don't want one with a lot of buttons, but I like like having something to hang on to. Yeah, the small mouse are I find the the the, the like the portable ones, I find them impossible to use. Yes. Because they kind of let you slip away from your hands. I like the trackpad. I like the trackpad because I can switch hands. Yeah, that's why I, I, should, I should say, though, I also have my, my magic mouse as well, which I do like. I actually do like the magic mouse. I like the gestures. So, so I Lena... I like the gestures. I, I, I can't believe I haven't mentioned this. I keep meaning to. Lena uses two mice. What? She has one mouse over mm-hmm. here. And then when she, when this hand gets tired or she wants to, like, use that hand to, like, flip through, you know, being a lawyer, there's actual papers and stuff they have to use, she can switch to the left-handed mouse. It's just it's just right there. Dan, it's and incredible honestly, that you found somebody as nerdy as you. <laughs> I think it's wonderful. She has a mechanical keyboard, too. Uh, and that was all before uh, I ever met her. But I honestly think, the, the more I think about it, the more it makes sense. There are definitely times, usually not when I'm doing work, when I'm, like, eating lunch at my computer, and I'm like, ah, like, I'm, I have my fork in my right hand, I gotta take the fork out, and I have to move the mouse. If you just had a little left-handed mouse. So I, I'm not, what I'm saying is, Colby, I think there's a lot to say about the ambidextrous thing. I Before I, mm-hmm. I really started thinking about it, I would have dismissed it, but there are times. Yeah, I started doing it when... Uh... When I first started working, I was having like wrist pains in my my right hand, and like was told like, "Oh, just use your other hand sometimes." So I just put the trackpad on the other side, and then it's like most things I can do with my left hand, and like the things that I can't, I just like turn a little more and use my right hand, and then I go back to my business. Or like if you put your computer, like your your laptop on one side and your trackpad on the other side uh. double trackpads you should you can have two mice right right sure or two two pointers I mean, right you, you that heard, would be cool you heard it here first colby does his business with <laughs> either hand both hands sometimes yeah. um, <laughs> uh, i i will say that i'm generally a mouse guy but the new macbook with the giant magic trackpad did really sell me on trackpads. That thing is awesome. Yep. Once I figured out how to do like the short press, long press gimmick that I'm still figuring out, um, that thing is very natural to use. And it's so big. I'm used to Windows laptops where they're like giant keyboards with really tiny trackpads. So man, that thing yeah. is that thing is sweet. Yep. So much. And touching. I haven't asked you, Colby, how are you enjoying having a physical escape key? <laughs> amazing um have you switched back your, all your vim configs yet no because i still have my my work computer still has a, a virtual escape key <laughs> <laughs> um yeah no i mostly like i mostly learned to do the other thing in vim the like command bracket or whatever that uh. that is the same as escape mostly. can i tell you about my my double double semicolon trick no you you just you can map i forget how but there's a way you can now we've really lost sean there's a way you can map double double uh, you press semicolon twice and that becomes escape because you never press semicolon in it once and then semicolon again all right that'd be crazy and, and it actually works for pretty much any consonant like hmm. you probably don't ever type uh, you know, actually, that's not true because the consonants do a lot. So anyways, if you can find a consonant that's not otherwise mapped, yeah, it's, it'll probably work. Cool. Yeah, Dan, that makes total sense. I absolutely agree. 
<laughs> What's your Vim config like, Sean? Uh, my my Vim config, uh, I have it uh, uh, Ice Electric 222. Uh, okay. And, 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 and you, cr you turn the crankshaft all the way up to 98, and you send that baby sailing. <laughs> Obviously. Seems Is that some kind of like special mechanical keyboard, the Ice Electric 222? It's got a crank on the side. You know. Yeah, you, you gotta you gotta fill up the uh, the the steam pistons. Well, when they say mechanical, that's, I expect that's what, it to yeah, be that's mechanical. That's what gives the keys resistance. They're actual hydraulic pumps. I asked the guy at the store, "How many sprockets does this have?" A lot of sprocket, a lot of gears. God, could you imagine me being steampunk? How much would that suck? Well, you're, you've got the mustache. Which do you? That's th true. All right, let me ask you this seriously: Which do you think would better fit? Me. Now, you guys know me. You've known me for a long time. Which would better fit me to, to take on as a personality? Steampunk guy or Renaissance Fair guy? Now, they both suck and both are bad ideas. I, I'll get that out of the way. But given the choice. Now, what are the differences between Steampunk and, and Renaissance Fair when it comes right down to it? I, I think it's... I think it's a sort of I I would say that a Renaissance fair is a little more I don't want to say primal because I don't think that's uh, that's a fair way to put it but I do think it's a little more uh, aggressive or maybe a little more um, gritty whereas I think steampunk is a little more aloof I think it's a little more sort of scientific in a way I think they're almost yes. opposites in a lot of ways yeah I think the science that but when it comes practically I think the reason you get into both hobbies is you like fun costumes. You like fun costumes, and probably you like a project. You like a what is it, boils down to an extremely complicated yeah. arts and crafts project. And, and your you real like life pretending. is very sad. You want to escape you like your real life. Right, right, right. So, so that's where I'm coming at it with you. Is like, is Sean especially good at or prone to any of these things? And given that you still like haven't watched season two of Westworld or any of these things. It's clear that you don't want to necessarily escape your life. Uh, no. But I think you do like a project. But that doesn't help. Like, both of those hobbies lend themselves well to different projects. I think, aesthetically, I could see you more as a steam... I think you pull off a steampunk look. Because you have, like, the right shaped head for those, like, really <laughs> cool... <laughs> what does that mean? Well, I'm getting there. Those really cool hipster, like circular glasses. You know what I'm talking mm. about? You could turn those into like some goggles. You get a little top hat. I think you could really rock that. Where it's like that's picturing exact. Sean as like Robin Hood. Like I, I, I can't imagine it as easily. That's exactly what I was thinking. I was thinking I can picture Sean in a top hat, and. <laughs> Steam steampunk is the one that the that accommodates that. So, yeah, I yeah. can't picture Sean in chainmail. Now, <laughs> uh, I, Zach in the chat says, which I do appreciate. He says, "Finally figured it out. Sean looks like he's in the progressive. We can't stop you from becoming your parents commercial." <laughs> and the joke, and, and Zach's not wrong because, and I do want to show you this. I'm becoming my dad. This is true. This is a photo of him, an actual photo of my father from the 80s okay you can take a look at that <laughs> he's, he's the biggest dork on the planet but i really am sort of i'm really sort of let me see if i got a more modern photo yeah I, you just gotta grow out the uh the top hair a little bit um i'm i'm let's see oh there's a there he is holding up a a, a barbecue rib but that's sort of you know sort of where i'm coming at he, i got the same haircut and i got the mustache mm -hmm. going um, and so, yes, I am becoming my father. Thank you. Mike. <laughs> Without knowing my dad, you nailed that. <laughs> anyway, uh, didn't mean to make this all about me, but I just, I was very curious what sort of, uh, es fantasy escapism I should really lean into. I like it. I, I, like my I think after you shave the mustache, you can go steampunk. No, I got to grow the mustache out, right? Isn't that kind of the big that, like Victorian era sort of? Uh, and you I got to get, get the sideburns. Twirly mustache. You know. <laughs> True. You can just do the whole the thing that like it connects. Like it's it's like this part is. My shit. uncle did that for a while, where where it was kind of like the W, where it kind of yeah. goes like that, and it was bizarre. Not okay. a good look. That's weird. I do not recommend it. 
Weird. Um, well, thankfully, that discussion pushed us right past the tech news into the picks of the week, uh, which is part of the show where each of us brings something we want to share. And uh, boy, do we have an eclectic mix today. Um, and let's see about Sir Dan. Yeah, so uh, recently I've been having to, you know, we all have a lot of time to fill. And uh, I can't spend a lot of my time doing things that really require me to be super on point with my fingers, which is, like, some video games. But, like, turn-based video games are are great. Uh, so uh, I've been playing a lot of turn-based video games, and I want to find some co-op games. Uh, and then a couple weeks ago, I was like, you know what, like, like there are all of these uh, computerized card games where, like, you know, you get random cards, and it, it's not a game that you could really make a physical card game because you can draw a card from any card that exists in the game and stuff like that. Like, there must be board games like this, too. There must be board games that are board games, and they're turn-based, and they they feel like board games that I could play uh, with people. And, you know, it doesn't require me to be super fast with my hands. So I found this game called For the King, which is on Switch and PC and PS4 or something. It's on some combination of systems. And it is it feels like a board game combined with like super duper simplified D&D rules. So you make a character, but the you know, the characters are very much on rails. You basically pick a class and you can change your appearance and that's it. Uh, and then you start on a board. The board is randomly generated, which is cool. You can't really do that with a regular board game. There's all these different like things that happen when you move your character. Everyone's character moves independently, so like one challenge is like you want to maximize, and it's all cooperative, so you want to maximize like how much uh, stuff you get. But if you get in a fight, then only the people close to you can join, so you kind of want to balance that with staying kind of close to one another. Uh, and there's like this clock, so the game doesn't last forever. You have to make progress, otherwise like the time will run out sort of thing so there's a lot of a lot of different urgencies a lot of competing priorities and the combat's pretty fun and it, it is D D, but no one has to know D D rules um like combat is basically like here are your attacks you can do uh you just press the button and then it rolls some dice for you it doesn't even call them dice uh so check it out I, it's pretty cheap i think it's 20 bucks on switch and cheaper on computer it's 20 bucks on steam 20 bucks on steam and like there, it comes with five or six adventures, I think. Oh, here's the other cool thing. So it's really hard, and you will lose. But it's one of those games that when you lose, you can purchase upgrades that carry forward into the next game. Mm -hmm. So we've been we've played three or four times, and we still haven't beaten the first adventure on the easiest mode. And there are five more. And there are harder difficulties. So, like you, Damn. if you really, if you end up liking it, you you can get a lot of money's worth out of it. Hmm. Cool. That's cool. Uh, it can be played online too, but unfortunately, uh, I'm pretty sure you can't mix local people with online people. Unfortunately. Nice for the king. Right. Available on, uh, as Dan mentioned. Steam, uh, Xbox, PS4, and the Switch. Cool. Neat. Another great game. Dan, you've been on a, a real gaming run. Yeah, well, I've had the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got something just as fun, Dan. Uh, and that would be the Bosch Icon Clear Max 365 Premium Beam, Beam Wiper Blades. Whoa. Woo! Now, no, that's not a cool weapon you can download uh, in your favorite <laughs> game. No, it is a car windshield wiper. Um, you're thinking, Sean, that may be the lamest thing you've ever picked on the show. And that may be true. Uh, but as the resident car owner of the show, uh, most people don't realize a part of your car that's very important is the windshield wiper. So make sure you can see out the window. And uh, as someone who has bought cheap blades or let blades stick around too long, um, you don't realize how much it's worth investing in good windshield wiper blades. Um, I just bought these Bosch ones for the first time. They are the wire cutter picks, unsurprisingly, for best windshield wiper blade. Um, and I've never had windshield wiper blades that work as well as these. Like, you know, good windshield wiper blades, they kind of clear the rain. There might be a little streak here or there. But they, these things, like, obliterate the rain. <laughs> like, when they're done going, 
it's like bone dry. Like it's now they're brand new to be fair. <laughs> But I've literally never had windshield... I've been a car owner for a decade. I've never had windshield wiper blades work as well as these Bosch icons. Um, now, they're kind of... Zach Frist says, love me some icon blades. My man, he knows. <laughs> now, these are kind of... I would say they're more expensive than the generic brand, but they are amazing, and they work really great. So the link will be on the website. You can just check out the wire cutters site, uh, the Bosch icon. Uh, make sure you get the ones that fit your car. And check those out. Uh, lastly, Colby, what what do you what what high tech gizmo gadget you got for us today? <laughs> so when I moved to this apartment, my my stove doesn't have like a preheated timer, I, like beeper or anything. Like it has like a dial, like a normal stove that you set to like a temperature, but it doesn't like tell you when it's preheated. So I didn't know. So I bought an oven thermometer, but. Really, I mean, this is the thing you hear, right? It's like people are like, oh, your stove is like, you know, who who the F knows what temperature it is. Um, it could be doing anything. And like, just because it says it's 350 doesn't mean it's 350. Um, so like having an oven thermometer, I am privy to how uh, how varied my stove temperatures are. It's really interesting. There's like one spot on the dial that is correct. And I think it's like 350 is correct, but like anywhere else is totally different than that. Huh. Yeah. Is it consistent? Or it, yeah, they, it change yeah. day to day. Okay. No, it's it's consistent. It's just like n- not like like the highest it goes. Like the highest temperature on on the dial is like I don't know, like 475 or something. And it gets like way hotter than that, uh, which. Huh. Which is fun for things that are you want to be hotter, but then like, like there are like lower temperatures in the four hundreds, or it's like way hotter than what the what the number is. Now, have you? I had an issue with an oven once that was uh, spotty, where and I don't remember exactly what, but it'd be like the back corner was colder. Have you like tried moving it around the inside of your oven to see the temperature variances? Or is that just, like, a lonely loser thing that I would do? (laughs) No, that's actually kind of interesting. I I haven't done that so much. Like, I have used it in different places when I needed to, like, move it around for, uh, depending on what I was putting in the oven, but... Well, in the temperature, I don't... What do you mainly use your oven for? Drying drying your clothes? Random. random. (laughs) Yeah, obviously. (laughs) Because really, the the variance really only matters for like baking and things like that. I think if you're just sort of making a That's casserole, you'll probably be okay. That's true. I just thought it was interesting. It's also pretty cheap. Like, oh yeah, the the oven thermometer I have costs seven dollars on Amazon. So. Yep. And now all you need to do is get the refrigerator thermometer to go with it, and then you'll just know the temperatures of all your appliances. There you go. There you go. And apparently, they're not. You, you have to get two different ones. They're not the same. Oh, oh yeah. Look, it's right here in the same page. That's how I. Well, because the scale is so radically off, <laughs> because the the oven one goes from like zero to six hundred, and the freezer one goes from like eighty to like negative twenty. So if you put the oven one in the fridge, it would just like see ze- it would just be zero. <laughs> Amazing. No finesse. That's cool. Well, we'll have the link to that on the website as well. You can check uh, check that out. Colby recommended. It's really not Sta- cool. Stamp of approval. Yeah, it works. I think it works. You know, I don't even know if it works. Maybe, <laughs> maybe the oven thermometer is just as wrong. But at least it's consistent, yes. right? It may not be accurate, but at least you know what it is day to day. Yes. That's yes, how I am I with do. my. Uh, I probably picked it on the show. My uh, my meat thermometer I use when I'm grilling. But I'm like so worried about not cooking the meat right that I just end up stabbing the meat 800 times, like constantly <laughs> checking the temperature. It's up four degrees. It's up five degree. I should just get a static one, but, um, <laughs> but it's such a dorky thing. Nice. Um, guys, I think that's uh, pretty much the end of the show. Anything else you'd like to to say or do this evening? No. Only okay. that I hope everyone's doing great. Aw, that's great. I don't. Okay. No, I just... Uh, <laughs> but I will just have an opportunity to plug, as I always do, what's going on over at Up for Debate, because we are smack in the middle of a new Up for Debate Presents series. 
And guys, we're watching the mo- one of the most iconic film franchises of all time. Do you know what it is, Dan? Rocky. Yes! Wow, that was kind of a guess. Maybe dun, you told me. Dun, 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 dun. I probably talked about it on the show before. Um, we are. We've already done Rockies 1 and 2. This week we're going to tape Rocky 3. We're going to go all the way through all the Rockies, the Creed movies. We're going to do, I think there's like seven or eight of them. We're going to watch all of them, and it's been very interesting. I've never seen any of them, uh, so it's all new to me. And I'm very excited, especially for 3 and 4 and 5, where things just get crazier and crazier. Um, it's been a very fun series so far. You can check that out up for debate or wherever you get podcasts. Um, be sure to, to give that a listen. And of course our show is at don't panic.io where if you get podcasts, you can go check that out. Uh, the links will be on the website. As I mentioned, you can also subscribe to the show wherever you get podcasts, uh, with a video version on YouTube. And of course you can follow us at don't panic show on Twitter or emails. Don't panic show at gmail.com. Uh, we're going to be back next week with more just, I would describe it as loose discussion. Um, <laughs> introspection, uh, and maybe a little bit of tech news. But until then, on behalf of Colby and Dan, I'm Sean. Thanks for being here. We'll see you next time for another Don't Panic.